Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Spiffing Brit, and today I have a video for you. It's a very long form video. It's basically a montage of the current 100 Statman series. That's right, this is 100 Statman, the immortal of CK2. If you have enjoyed the 100 Statman series or you haven't seen it yet, I strongly advise sitting down, watching this with a cup of tea. It's going to be a long one. You might want to watch it over several sittings, but hey, a lot of work went into this, and it's all of the greatest moments of the 100 Statman story so far. So sit back, relax, get comfy, hit the like button if you're ready and I'll see all of you at the end of it. Farewell, have a nice time. Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I am the Spiffing Brit and today we're playing some more Crusader Kings 2 but we're back with a hundred Statman like you've never seen him before. It's Duke 100 of Upland but this time he has something on his side. He's an immortal! Last playthrough, he killed so many people, he went to the afterlife, uh, dueled with Odin himself, and Odin was like, you know what, mate, I need to send you back down to Earth, but this time I'm making you immortal so that I don't have to see you again. This guy is Valhalla Bound. He's also a Viking, a Varnagian, he's an adventurer, he's brawny, he is a renowned physician, he's left-handed, he is, of course, a giant, he's a genius, duelist, Hunter, Impaler, Master Seducer, mmm. As you can see, all of his statistics are phenomenal and all over 100, including his personal combat skill, which at the start of the game is 165. Jesus Christ, that is amazing. We've naturally gone for the war focus and we want to become the King of Sweden. We start out with a strong claim on the Kingdom of Sweden. I'd be looking really worried if I was the King of Sweden right now, because I know, yeah, with only 2,700 troops, mate, you gotta run, and you've gotta run fast. So hang a second, I can buy a court physician who is quite simply possessed by the devil himself, and it costs me £10? You know what, that sounds like a good deal. Oh, my king wants to appoint me as a steward, why not? Oh, the king of Sweden literally just immediately died of pneumonia. Some historians would later comment that it was suspicious that the king of Sweden's last act was to appoint 100 Statman as his chancellor with his possessed doctor working as an assistant. However, that's just a theory. A GAME THEORY! God, some random bloke wants to get me to join the creepy cult. No thank you. We shouldn't speak of this. I want to join the Wolf Warriors. Oh, and I'm gladly going to prove myself against. Who's this? Some random marshal? 26 combat school? I don't mind proving myself. Huzzah! And he gets wounded. Poor little sod here. Well, now what are our opening moves? Immediately taking over the Kingdom of Sweden and then purging all of the pesky little Catholics from our lands. Because I mean, look at these pesky Catholics. Ugh, disgusting. And then we want to immediately proceed to the larger empires where they have vast amounts of people in their court. And the reason we want more people in courts is because it means when we raid the courts, we're going to get loads and loads of people in our prisons. And when they're in our prisons, we can sacrifice them. Oh my god, hang a second. Oh god, I'm now the leader of the Wolf Warriors. It's only 1067. How am I already... <sighs> goodness sake. Okay, sure. I guess we have only got seven members, but fine. I'm now the leader of the Wolf Warriors. That means I now physically can't die in the field of battle. My character is now 100% immortal because previously the only way to die with the immortal trait was to be slain in the field of battle. Sorry, I've just been given a mission to impress the Wolf Warriors by declaring war on France for this region here. You know what? This seems like a brilliant idea for a hundred stat man. Okay, the defensive pact opposing William the Conqueror has been disbanded. I think that's mostly because all of the United Kingdom has come under the control of Norway, including Normandy. What has happened here? King Harde of Norway, what have you done? I'm going to duel you. I want to create a bit of chaos. Perfection. He's chosen to accept the challenge, even though he's at minus two personal combat skill. Oh, my opponent seems to be getting tired. His moves are becoming slower. I thrust my bastard sword hard into his chest. The surprise is clear on his face as blood fills his mouth. I must have hit something rather important. And important it was indeed, because he's dead. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Oh, we can host a legendary gathering. <gasps> this seems like a great idea to already get started on a legend in only 1068. Why not? Oh, wait, I just realized I can actually fix my recruitment thing by just doing Inspire Warriors. It completely refills a garrison for 150 renown. And now I'm up to my full levy for only 300 renown. God, this society system is pretty broken. <laughs> so let's just raise up our army. 
make sure I'm in control, and just uh, immediately march onto their capital. What an absolute bloody success. And I think we could take Sweden in just a matter of days. Hang on a second, did we just capture four people in that one siege? We have, and the best thing is, they're all enemies. So we'll ransom off one of them, but the people we can't ransom, we can just, uh... Sorry, did you guys, you guys didn't... I promise that wasn't just a two-year-old I murdered. <laughs> Jesus. This game's a bit brutal. So there we go, that's uh, our first three kills to the list. Nice. Good job there. Oh wait, we're on four. Oh yeah, because of course we killed the king of <laughs> we killed the king of Norway. And let's move down to Ostgirtland. God, there are some really funky names for these places. There we go. That's a success. 100% war score. We can now perfectly peace out. Success. We are now the king of Sweden. Oh, I've got a new heir, Sigborn. Is that his name? No, 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 no. So we have a hundred stat man. It's gonna be 100 stat son of the 100 stat dynasty. This guy, who I, I clicked on because he was unhappy and he owes me a favour, he has a treasury. In the treasury, he has fucking Mjolnir. Now for those of you that don't know, this is Fall's Hammer. I'm just saying, I want this. I very much need this. You're the Grand Mayor of Gotland. You're Catholic. Can I raise up an army and raid you? Release you, grant independence, and then declare war immediately? Yes, and now can I raid? Yes, I can. Bam, there we go. First you grant independence, and then you immediately proceed to sack their lands just so you can get Mjolnir. There's the little pesky Danish army. Let's jump on that because you know, why not? Ooh, I gained the trait Berserker for an extra 25 personal combat skill, which now puts me at 210 combat skill. Perfectly fine, as all things should be. I'm out hunting one afternoon and a bearded elder approaches, donning a simple traveler's cloak and a wide-brimmed hat that conceals his other eye. He greets you with courtesy, requests a horn of mead, and then informs you that just yonder a well lies forgotten, filled with gold. He wanders off, chuckling as he goes, leaving you struck with the familiarity of his presence. <sighs> Naturally, he must have been Odin. Of course, this was Odin's next mission to me. Um, and yeah, we're going to go find God's treasure, and we're also now zealous. Uh, thank you, Odin. <laughs> You know what, um, the king of the HRE, he's got a ton of people in his court, like literally an absolute ton. I'd say that the capital of the HRE Magdeburg, there's a bit of gold lying around there, there's certainly a lot of people lying around there. Raise up our men here, and we turn on raiding, and we just waltz on down to the centre of the HRE. We should get some fun things out of it. Who knows what we're going to find. And here we go, victory! What did we get? What did we get? Zero gold. Nice. But we successfully captured some people in a siege. Wait, how many did we capture? Six people in one go. Oh, that's very good. You know what? You know what we can do? Hold a great bolt? Yes. <laughs> Wait a second, I can ransom you because you're the daughter of the HRE leader for 110 gold. You're getting a ransom. So the rest of you can get sacrificed. How many kills is that now? Takes us up to 24. Very good. Two people. Are they worth any gold? Nope. So that's one sacrifice, and a second sacrifice. Surely the King of Norway, you've got, at least, yeah, the King of Norway, you've got a lot of stuff in your court. So we'll take the loot home, and then we're going to go raid the King of Norway. Okay, you know what, we're going to raid the uh, Norwegian capital via boats. We're literally going to use Vikings to raid Vikings. It's a great idea. All right, I think it's finally time we actually go for the conquest of Belouge. Um, against France. They have 7,000 men, so you know, I feel like this is a great opportunity to finally test the mettle of the Swedes against the French. It appears the French are already sending a navy over towards us. Who knows what is on this navy? I think they might be in for a fun little surprise where well, you've got the French king with you as well, and you've got no morale. Oh my goodness, what are you doing? The King of France is in my lands once more, but he only has eight men with him. What are you doing, King Philippe? I just have... Oh my goodness, England is free. And they've taken this part of Norway with them. But they've also created horrific border gore in Normandy. Thank you. And also, Cornwall decided to stay with Norway. Okay, I love you, game. But you're just a bit odd sometimes. Wait, how's a second. So the French army rode a boat all the way over to Sweden 
and is now currently walking back through the HRE to get to me because I'm sieging Paris. There are parts of the AI in this game that I, I love, but I just feel like I can never truly understand. Ooh, and I can find a short sword on the field of battle. What's this short sword like? Masterful short sword, incredible leading from the center modifier, and an extra 15 personal combat skill. Also, I can rename the masterful short swords. I'm gonna rename this 100 stat bam, because you know when you get hit by it, it's like, wha-bam, you've been 100 stat man where literally there's nothing you can do because he's a god who walks the earth. You know, we've had a really successful time in France. We've got 20 prisoners, somehow. No idea where they've come from. Yeah, let's just execute everyone. No one's gonna object, so... Oh, we only have 11 prisoners left now. Right, well, you can get executed. You can get executed. Hasing the King of Norway's in our prison. Hang on a second. Okay, so because the King of Norway is in my prison, I've just set his uh, childhood focus to faith, meaning he's now going to pick up the wonderful religion of Germanics, and that means he'll love me. And then I'll release him into his kingdom, and uh, yeah, everyone will be really confused by the fact that he's a Germanic. Also, he has a pet rat in my dungeon. Oh, there we go, look at this. I've got so many things on my hands. I've got a temple. What am I meant to do with a temple? Oh, the English are having a revolt. This kingdom was literally made just moments ago and you're already having a revolt. So unstable. Oh, yes, the King of Norway is now very interested in learning about our Germanic culture, as well as the Swedish culture. Thank God, we are actually converting the King of Norway to being Swedish. The old switcheroo. Who saw that one coming? <gasps> Teach him about Odin. Yes, little Olaf the Fourth of Norway is now... Germanic! <laughs> Eat that, you bloody crazy bloodline. Have fun. Ah, oh, there we go. He absolutely loves me. Oh, goodness. You know what? I feel like I should release you. I really should. But now, Germanic. Oh, we can hold a great bolt. This is a great way to uh, get rid of all the people in our dungeons who we can't execute without incurring a bit of sadness. Oh, actually, wait. We need to make sure we don't kill Olaf. Right, you know, I think it's raiding time, and that means um, I'm going to raise up some levy fleets, and we're going to go and loot, guess what, the capital of the Byzantine Empire. We're going to sail all the way down to Constantinople, and we're just going to loot the entire place, because surely there's people hiding in those castles. We're just about to, we're about to take, con oh, did I forget to, I forgot to bloody turn on looting, didn't I? Here we go, it's time to land on into Constantinople. And that's a siege. Here we go, the siege is about to end. <gasps> My warriors are already sprawling through the streets of Constantinople to take their hard fought loot when I receive news that there is a still a pocket of defenders hiding in the area. It is a small band of mercenaries led by a man called Andreas of Hendusa. Their leader claims that he has no quarrel with us and would in fact be ready to join my army for the right price. So I could give him 250 gold and uh, I'd get a maintenance free troop. These troops will always be ready for raiding. They'd be great, however, um, I could just duel you and probably get your men for free. I mean that's a thousand free men that don't even need maintenance, so I'm gonna duel you mate, because I'm sorry Andreas. You're just not very good. <laughs> and now we get a thousand free men! By the way, from that one siege of the capital city, we gained over 200 gold. Like, genuinely, sieging Constantinople with looters, I didn't realise it was this profitable. Like, literally, this is going to prop up our empire for years to come. <gasps> I found a strange chest. Just somewhere randomly, okay, and one day this chest will be opened? Who knows where it's from, but, um... Yeah, I'll add that to my treasury. I honestly don't know what happens. I'd love to see what's inside the strange chest because maybe it's Mjolnir. Maybe this is how we get it. Oh my God. We've we've got almost 600 gold from this looting trip already. Oh, and they're attacking us again. There we go. We've got the men back. It's time to return home and absolutely flood the streets with infinite amounts of gold. We've returned home with 930 gold, giving us 930 prestige. And we get an influx of loot. Lovely. Good lord. What a successful raid that was. Okay, right. I feel like I've missed a ridiculous amount of stuff. For a start, the Crusades just won. And um, we now have... 
a king of Jerusalem. Who's got an Italian crusader spear. Also, rum. I have no idea where this has come from. This has literally just happened. What the heck is going on? And now a jihad has just happened. You know, this is actually the first time I've decided to take a look at what my family has been up to. And I didn't realise I had this many children. Like, who even is this person? Killed by a wild beast. My son was killed by a wild beast. Since when did that happen? Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. With a fertility score like me, you can just make more. Besides, I'm never going to die of old age. Although this lady here might. Christ, she's one-legged and has an infection. Wait, since when did my wife stop becoming a jewelist? Can we jewel her? <gasps> the only way to settle relationship disputes, I think you'll find you're doing the washing up today. <laughs> oh, good lord. I win the jewel and she gets disfigured and severely injured oh no oh god what have i done to you i'm so sorry i'm so so sorry you're currently at minus five health you're gonna die any day now the king of denmark is our bit of rival meaning we can just declare war on him that just puts him in my dungeons for no real reason so why not i think this is a brilliant opportunity to just raise up the levy and throw the king of denmark into our dungeons yes and of course i'm currently in the process of abolishing all council powers because i mean who needs democracy anyway well bam so we're on our way to chase down the king King of Denmark, which way he should be in this castle somewhere. <gasps> it ended inconclusively. The bastard went and died. Died of gout. That's not even impressive or anything. He just had gout and died of depression and was missing an arm and was severely injured. What did I do to you? I'm so sorry. Your existence must have been horrendous. But it's okay because he's got a son and we can make his life even worse. All right, I'm summoning the levy. We're going to take Skarne because, you know, why not? I think it's a great idea. So we've decided to declare war on Denmark once more, mostly just to make this guy's life absolute hell because, I mean, his dad went and wimped out and ended up dying of gout. Jesus Christ, how many siblings does he have? God, you were one busy man, King Sven II. We fabricated a claim on the county of Magdeburg. Now, if we did this, it means we get to go to war with all of the HRE for an absolute laugh, and they have 25,000 men, so I mean, it would be great fun. Let's use this claim. Bam, 100% war score. I'd say this was a successful victory. And look at this. Now our lands are united. Soon we'll be able to create a wonderful line all the way down to Rome. Speaking of which, can we actually declare war on the Pope? <gasps> We can. War with Rome it is, because why not? Oh, the Duke of Barcelona has joined the war against us. I'm afraid I don't really think no matter how many people you call into the war, it's going to make a difference. Okay, actually, a lot of people are joining the war now. Oh, look, it's the Papal Fleet. 83 galleys. I wonder what you've got in store for me, because my men can't wait to face you on the field of battle. Oh, is it that the Pope himself? No, it's not. But it's his men who are all about to die. Oh, who's this? It's the son of the King of Denmark, who's in my prison. Great news, everyone. He has become a skilled tactician. Clap, 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 clap. Well done there, Glum. Well done there. It's lovely to have you with us. Now, we've actually got the Knights Templar themselves have turned up to fight. <laughs> I'm afraid it's not going to make a difference, because I'm 100 step man. You know what, I think it's actually time we wander all the way down to the papacy itself. Let's go take Rome. It's Ulm! Jesus Christ, it's Ulm! I didn't realise they had this in the game. Look at you, Count Guido of Ulm. What guy? I want to sway you. I want to be your friend, Count Guido. Join my cause. We might be different religions, but that can't mean we can't be friends. Now it's time to siege down Rome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's actually fallen in literally just a month. Oh, my ambition is now to strengthen the Germanic religion. Well, actually, my ambition is to kill 1,000 people. But, you know, strengthening... <gasps> oh, shite, my wife died. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, I actually completely missed that. Wow. I understand, man. Do you not even care that your wife died? To be fair, it probably didn't help that we cut off half of her face and severely injured her and then she died. I feel like that might have played a role in it. But either way, it's time to go wife shopping. And that means we should probably avoid all of these 12 year olds. So in order to avoid all of those 12 year olds, we're gonna go with a 13 year old who's a genius, you know, it just kind of had to happen. Oh my gosh, my heart burns with fervor upon hearing the poor Germanic souls are being oppressed. Oh, it's incredible. I must liberate my Germanic brethren. Oh, this just allows me to liberate religion. 
This is incredible, I want this. We've achieved 88 kills. You know what, I think we can do more. Jesus Christ, when did we have 20 prisoners? My good God. Um, well, thank God someone told me we have an execute all prisoners button. Wabam. Oh! Oh God, the screams. Rome is ours. Ladies and gentlemen, the Germanic Swedes control Rome. Ah, we couldn't live in a better world, even if we tried. You know what, I actually want to set about converting this almost immediately. You know, I really think we should probably get some money by looting and burning Constantinople again. I mean, just look at it, they've got an infidel tax at the moment. What the heck even is an infidel tax? Now, how are we going to even get the men together to invade Constantinople? Well, good question. We're going to right-click on the capital and just inspire some warriors to appear out of nowhere. That's 5,000 free men. The city of world's desire. It's beautiful, and it's also full of gold. Even more gold now that there's an infidel tax. It's great. Who wouldn't want to loot it? You know, we could either go and burn it down, or we could just take the city for ourselves. And I've got to be honest, might as well do the latter. Is that seriously all your army has to offer? Just 1,000 men? Okay, right. Come on, we're on our plot to kill the high chief of Kovala, blah, 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 blah. Oh, you're over here. Oh, you're the bloke who controls this land. Oh, I don't mind killing you anyway. Survived unharmed. Oh, great. We're going to have to kill him. Oh, and he's gone into hiding. Makes him harder to assassinate. Well, I'll bloody find a way. There we have it. We've successfully captured Venice. Wabam. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Okay, we have to make a tough decision. My good friend, Chief Bertil, also known as the Cleansing Flame of Halgin's Art, He's my vassal, he's been with me for a long time, and he's also a great carouser. We've been friends for going on probably about 20 years now. He's been with me for the good times and the bad times. Late into the third day of feasting, I sit awake alone, contemplating the reveries. Next to me on a couch lies one of my companions, sleeping, a deep drunken sleep. Defenseless and beautiful, skin glowing in the candlelight. How peaceful this is, or oh, I think I'll try some. Oh God, I will gain the trait cannibal, but I will, I'll kill my friend. Oh no. I don't think we should do this one yet, so we're not going to do this one. We really, really shouldn't do this one, ladies and gentlemen. Please, we shouldn't be doing this one. I'm crying now. Oh God, he was so tasty. Oh God, Bertil. Bertil, I'm so sorry. The reveling and carousing is over for now. Time to get back to the real life. Oh God, I'm so sorry, Bertil. I'm so sorry. Oh, what a lovely man you were. You were too good for this world. Oh, God. So I've decided to change the names of a few of our provinces, starting with, of course, Slough up here, Grimsby, Skegness, What Is, and, of course, Upland. Well, bam, I got you there, didn't I, ladies and gentlemen? Anyway, so what's the plan now? Well, as we can see, King 100 Ironheart, he's 51 years old now. He's kind of an old boy. Now, naturally, we want to strengthen the Germanic religion. There's a few ways we can do that. We could declare war on the HRE and take this wonderful province of Zealand, name it New Zealand. Alternatively, this bloke here, who, yes, we tried to murder, but it's very important to mention he has a concubine. Who's my lover? She's great. She's amazing. This guy, however, he's not. He's also got syphilis, so I'd like to murder him before he can give it to my lover, and then I attempt to marry her. Now, we have tried murdering him, but he's just gone into hiding. However, there's a new option here. A religious liberation war. Now, this gives us more moral authority. It gives us prestige and piety. The only negative is nearby rulers of his faith might also join. But honestly, who cares? We're basically God already. Apparently, he's called in a few people, but honestly, just looks like we're at war with Finland and I've got to be honest, that's nothing difficult at all. Upland prospers, I can lose a thousand gold, but add one holding. Yes, let's make Upland even bigger. We can build more castles. It's going to be a ridiculous fort, Upland, once I've finished. Oh my goodness, they've called a ton of tribes into this. Of course, it doesn't really make a difference at the end of the day, because we're going to win. A 13k stack. God, we haven't seen one of those in a while. I think it's time we've raised up the men of Skarne. Great news. In the siege, we've managed to capture...
capture our lover and steal her and she's in her prison. But also she's given birth to a bastard of mine. That's right, Chief Carver, get cucked, boy. And I can just recruit her and she'll no longer be a concubine, the Chief Cuckward. Oh, brilliant. You're recruited now. <gasps> Amazing. And we can be married. The chaos surrounding the Battle of Slough, my man, cornered Cavalla, who bravely resisted, according to reports, but then he tripped on his own axe. Good riddance, my boy. Hey, hang on a second, what? What has happened? Sorry, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> I finished the war, and it's liberated the province. Yeah, it's liberated it to King Bro Vienna of Sweden. But I'm King 100 Ironheart of Sweden. There are two kings of Sweden. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What are you? Thank God you're not a king of Sweden. Wow, you really do hate me. Reasons why attempted murder, dishonorable, declared war, cuckolded, executed by a child, defeated me, religious differences, I'm a cannibal and a kingslayer. My god, wow, you really don't like me. Perhaps it is time for us to go and declare war on the HRE. They've got 26,000 men, which is actually quite a large amount of men. And what I can also do to make sure we have an even higher chance of winning is to just do a war sacrifice. So let's do one of those. Oh, new son, Folky. My son is a genius, of course he is. Of course he would be. He's the son of a hundred stat man, the single greatest person in the world. Here we go, 100% war score, we've done it. Oh, beautiful. The province of Zealand is now under our religious control. Now we just need to take this place over here in Norway. That would involve declaring war on Norway, and I do like my Norwegian friends. Hmm, I'd prefer him to just simply convert. Yes, I've turned on the raiding. Let's embark the army, and let's sail down to Constantinople, because they've got a brilliant deal on gold at the moment, and I'm in the lookout for about 2,000 of the stuff. Oh my good lord. Um... It would appear all of Norway has gone into revolt against my good friend, King Olaf, son of Loki. You know what? I think I should probably step in and help you. I'm afraid I can't lead these men because I'm kind of busy down looting the capital of Trebizond, Constantinople. Oh, the reserve army is under attack. This guy here with 11,000 men is coming along. Well, it's a good thing we can teleport 100 Statman over here immediately and he can uh, probably win this battle no problem. No, 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 God, no. Okay, right. So... I'm just going to quickly save the game, <laughs> it's quite important. Uh, if some of you remember from last episode, we discovered a very interesting artifact known as the Strange Chest. Now, I did a bit of research. Strange Chest can sometimes be that chest that they open in, you know, the first Indiana Jones film that melts the face off of everyone. Yeah. Right, let's open the chest and find out. The key fits the lock. It only contains a few parch scrolls that crumbles into dust when you touch it. Oh, thank God. I walk away disappointed, but at least I walked away alive. Let's look on the plus side. Now let's loot Sussex. Success! We've looted, and now it's time to attack the King of England. Because who knows what we might get? We might get Mayor Reginald. Oh no, it's actually Mayor Reagan. What a lovely guy. Sacrificed. Oh wait, no, I get to duel him. Okay, let's actually kill him now. Oh no, at 174 kills. Good lord. This is good. We're almost 20% of the way there. Good looting spree so far because we've got, um, what is this? 1,500 gold on a boat? Yeah, I think we should probably land it. We've burnt down a lot of the English countryside and even better, we have 19 prisoners. Now, a few of these are actually valuable and we could ransom them for money. Alternatively, we could just hit execute all. Oh, now that... That's good stuff. Wait, no. No, what happened to the King of Norway? No, my my friend. King Loki died of severe stress. Olaf the Fourth. Olaf, you died of stress. Oh, my son, it was absolutely lovely to know you. You had a great life. I'm so sorry you died when all of these guys were being boring Christians, but now that they're Christians, I feel absolutely no worry in just attacking them. Religion can be reformed. Yes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have changed our nature to dogmatic. We have included divine marriage, which allows close kin marriages. <laughs> yeah, basically this legalizes incest, and if anything, it's meant to be a good thing. 
We also have very bloodthirsty gods, so basically we're going to have more opportunities to sacrifice people and get more rewards for sacrificing people. And our leadership is temporal, meaning the reformer will become the head of the religion. We are also an immortal. King 100 Ironheart Statman is an immortal character with 100 stats, meaning he is not only a god to play as, but he will actually be regarded as the god of this religion. This is certainly going to help us on our quest to getting 1,000 kills. So, let us reform! Success! Ah, oh, suddenly all these people have had their temples usurped by true Germanics. We've done it, ladies and gentlemen. We've done it. We are a reformed pagan. Oh no, the bloody pesky tribes of Yutinga have just converted to the Catholic faith. Oh, that's quite annoying. Oh, well, don't worry. I'm sure we can convert them back with some good old crusading. Now that we've reformed our faith, we have so many more opportunities for war. For example, when we click on Denmark, we can right-click, declare war, and we can just have a holy war for the entire thing. <laughs> oh my god, I love this game. But with our religion now reformed into something even more powerful, I feel we should have absolutely no problem conquering the entire world. For example, let us take a look at the Holy Roman Empire. We could just have a holy war and take the entirety of Bavaria if we really wanted, or perhaps the entirety of Bohemia, maybe all of Burgundy, or my personal favourite, take the entirety of Germany. You know what? We've just, we've just got back into the game. We might as well take the entirety of Germany. What could possibly go wrong? Actually, just to get ourselves started, I think we'll have a quick holy war for the rest of Denmark. We can conduct a war sacrifice. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing one. Oh, some guy called Tord literally just joined my court and I've just married him to one of my daughters but apparently we can sacrifice him. Now it does increase the speed of our armies and make them absolutely incredible. Okay, fine. Sacrifice it is, I'm afraid. A life for a victory. I'm terribly sorry, Tord. What's this? Perform a mass sacrifice. Sacrifice a considerable portion of your subjects to improve morale. I can get Upland to do it. That way Upland gets rivers of blood for the next 10 years, they're not going to be very good. Alternatively, scouring every village. That makes all demais <laughs> very bad, but we get an extra 10% morale. Or all of Sweden will run with blood. <laughs> Gain moral authority and everything becomes a field of skulls. Oh my good lord. Um. All right, fire! We can ransom 12 characters for 443 gold, or alternatively, we could just execute all of them. Yeah, I think I chose the better option there. Fine, I will accept your peace offer, King of Denmark. Kingdom of Denmark is mine. Now I just need to defeat this Danish revolt against this guy who's now king. <laughs> You're now the King of Denmark. My friend, the, what happened to the previous King of Denmark? He was just like, you know what? Bugger it. I'm out of here. I don't want to deal with this. And he's just given up. And now you have to face off against the <laughs> Danish revolt. God, what has happened to the HRE? Since when did Genoa get this big? What's happened? Rome is split in two. We have Trebizond here. And of course, Trebizond here and Trebizond here. All different types of Trebizond. There's a horrific set of borders going on here with some of the tribes. Comania is no longer existing. The Chinese are starting to invade. Most importantly, Spain hasn't been retaken by the Catholics, which means it can be retaken by the Norsemen. Wait, how second France controls? Devon and Cornwall, what's gone on there? Norway is in control of the wonderful Normandy. This is five lovely regions of immense wealth, but most importantly, they're Catholic. And really, they shouldn't be Catholic. Now, now sadly, we can't do huge great crusades for entire nations because the pagan Great Holy War era has not yet begun. As a result, we're going to have to settle for just quite simply taking the entirety of Normandy. But you know what? I think that's fine. I'll, I'll settle for that. These men are from England. <gasps> they've landed in Sunderland. Right, that's fine. We're just going to have to attack them. You know, they've had an absolutely wonderful time. They've gone on a wonderful cruise all the way from Middlesex, just round Denmark. They've had a wonderful time. They've come on down here. They've landed and they've arrived on the coast of Sweden. And they're like, yeah, finally, we're going to be able to join the war. And then, no. Immediately over a quarter of them are just slain in combat. And it's rolling around in the field of battle, looking at all your dead friends. It's like, okay, right. This was a mistake. We should probably go home now. So who am I at war with now? Okay, all of the HRE, all of England, and the King of Denmark. I get the feeling that France might start getting a little bit worried. Oh, yep, they've they've just got too worried, and they've now joined the war against me. <laughs> 
Yep. Yes, King Philippe the Confessor, who's incapable and a crusader, he suddenly noticed that the rapid increase in Swedes on their border might be a cause for concern and so he's suddenly gone right let's join the war I'm gonna whip out the French crusading mace and it's time to defend Normandy but in the meantime it doesn't matter because I can just quite simply assault my way through Normandy and we've actually done it that's the war completed have we captured enough people in the uh, in the sieges oh we've caught 15 you know I think we can do a little bit better than that I'm going to go down to Paris and finally there we go that's the final one how many people are in our dungeons now? 20 free people. Now, we have a few options here. We could ransom them all for 272 gold, or we could just quite simply hit this button here. Oh, glorious noises. Glorious. Normandy is now ours. It's Sweden. So what's our current threat at? Oh, it's at 12%, right. Oh, that's not too bad. I'm sure it won't really make a difference. And the leader of the HRE has died, so it's moved. And guess what? It's even closer to us now. It's over here. What do you actually offer? 19,000 men. And if I were to declare war on you, I could have holy wars for the entirety of Burgundy, Bohemia, Carthia. Could I take Germany? I am actually now allowed to take Germany because the pagan holy war era has begun. Ladies and gentlemen, should we take the entirety of Germany? It's the great holy war for Germany. The mighty Feiklier 100 has decided that it is time to teach Kaiser Henrik V another lesson in humility. All free Germanic men are invited to partake in the scouring of the kingdom of Germany. The All Father is with us. Yes. Apparently the Pope is feeling a little bit threatened by our glorious crusade for the entirety of the HRE and has decided that they're going to have a <laughs> crusade for Frace. Why not? Um, Frace isn't that threatening, but have fun on your little crusade. It's time for my glorious crusade. Yeah, that's right. It's the Germanic Great Holy War. Just march on down to their capital and loot and burn it. The other army? Simply distract Norway and stop them from sieging our beautiful lands. How many people are we at war with? <laughs> it's... Um... <laughs> It's quite big. <laughs> oh, the King of Hungary has joined in the war against us. Oh, and we've got a 100% war score already. Why have we got a 100% war score? We captured the King of the HRE. Oh, wait, no, we've captured his wife. And also your son. How many people have we got in our prison? 16. Oh, we could do way better than that. I really do enjoy sacking Paris. It just gives us so many men. There's just endless bodies in Paris. Oh, we've 271 kills. Good lord. Now we're at 100% war score. King of the HRE just died. How did you die? You died of scurvy. <laughs> what? <laughs> How? Oh my god. Right, fine. Money continues to flow through the trade post of Venezia, but your relationship with the merchant family that owns it is sour. The Ventiga family. Whereabouts are you situated, Mr. Patrician? Oh, you're all the way over here. Right. Assemble the angry mobs. God, I'm about to lose a thousand gold, but Upland's going to get a glorious monument for the rest of the game. There's going to be a huge statue of me here. <gasps> What? I'm able to cut down Duke Ardino. The man groans and tosses something into the dirt. I hesitate for a second and my enemy uses the opportunity to start running away, leaving me staring at the item on the ground. Sword from heaven has been out. <laughs> what? What? A sword from heaven of metal that fell from the sky. Some say it is a gift from God. 100%. You see it, guys? Bam. Off a piece. Enforced demands. The Germanic Holy War for Germany has ended. Volkir 100 has won. Successful Great Holy War. <gasps> Look at it, it's beautiful. Oh. Say goodbye to all that moral authority for all those Christians. They're now down to 62 moral authority, whereas we are at a glorious 100%. And I can create the Kingdom of Germany. Right, sure, we'll take that. Right, I'm now the King of Germany. 50% fret, right. Yeah, we're gonna need to wait for that to uh, decrease a little bit. Oh God, great news guys. The Mongol hordes have just arrived. What can those equestrians hope to accomplish? Who knows, but um, they're probably gonna get a bit close to my land. We're gonna actually need to summon even more lodge commanders. Even more lodge commanders. Oh great, there's been a Catholic uprising. <sighs> those bloody pesky infidels. Well, it's a good thing I can summon just some nearby men. Oh my God, there we have it, finally. I've got the main size down to 26. Oh my God. And I've just inherited a title from this bloody guy, Duke Toasty. I've just inherited his two lands and I've gone immediately over my domain size. And he kills me at now, 322. Perfection. How's our religious conversions going on? We haven't converted a single province yet to being Germanic, but we're making progress, okay? Oh, how much money are we gaining a month? That's right, 100 gold a month. Oh, rest in peace. The Blessed Virgin, it seems, does not favor the Christian faithful. Pope Innocentus III has called off the crusade for free. What is Catholic moral authority like at the moment then? Oh, it's only at 52. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Catholics, I'm going to plunge you into the ground. There is going to be absolutely nothing left. It's going to take 189 months for it to decay to 0%, but we'll get there one day. I'm immortal after all, so we'll get there. <gasps> we converted Sodomand. <gasps> Perfection. Right, it's time to get on with converting, I guess, Rome. Why not? Let's convert Rome. Anyway, we've defeated the HRE army. They lost 7,000 men. We lost basically nothing. And they can, of course, have a ton of sacrifices. Anyway, it's down to the actual capital of the HRE. This is probably one of the most important things to grab. And the Battle of Villarc. Some bloke dies. All of the HRE is ours. I'm pretty sure we've captured. Yet yeah, we've got all of your children, excluding one. <laughs> Oh, God, I love this. Oh, the Dancing Plague. Oh, okay. I actually saw a YouTube video on this recently. So the Dancing Plague is part of like a group thing where some guys started dancing and then everyone started dancing. It's a truly unprecedented situation and apparently it's happening in Gotland. We've increased our kill count up to 326, although actually I think we can do better because we could ransom off all of these people. How much is that? 326 gold. That's probably what they'd want us to do. Or we could just execute all prisoners. Anyway, execute everyone. There we go. What if we don't attack people per se, but instead we just raid everything? I want to spend an entire episode just simply raiding to see how many prisoners we can get. And of course, at the end of the video, we will then try and execute this vast number of prisoners and see what happens to the game, because I'm pretty sure the audio will have never experienced, I don't know, let's say a hundred people all dying at once. So, what are a few of our possible raiding targets? Well, as always, the capital of an empire is always a lovely place to start. There's also the head of the Catholic Church, that's a nice place to raid. Paris is also great, so is Luxembourg. Oh, of course. And my personal favorite favorite, Constantinople, now ruled over by Duke Presida, the cruel of Kavana, who is scarred, proud, cruel, lustful, possessed, and has one eye. Also, I have the feeling that perhaps going all the way over to the Rum Dynasty, we're likely to find quite a few people over there. So, let us quite simply waltz down to the capital of the HRE and see what we can collect in today's raid. See, it's wonderful because we're attacking all these people, and yet we're losing fret because, you know, we're not actually at war with them. All we're doing is simply borrowing some of their people. Oh, and my betrothed wife has finally turned 16, meaning we can marry. Legends about Alexander the Great and his epic campaign across Asia are told throughout the known world. Countless young rulers have wasted their lives in their hopeless attempts to emulate the immortal achievements of this legendary figure. Having died young after fathering only one child, Alexander was unable to establish an imperial dynasty. Rulers of all creeds and nations claim to trace their ancestors to fleeting lines of Alexander, yet none have been able to have such a prestigious claim be recognised by their peers and subjects. So I could actually claim to be part of the blood of Alexander? Myself? Feiglia 100 Ironheart of, of Sweden? Fine, I'll be the first to succeed. Attempt to forge a claim. Here we go, the Tomb of Alexander. The location of the hallowed grounds where the Great Conqueror was put to his final rest has been contested topic for millennia. Many Roman emperors of old have claimed to have visited the Tomb of Alexander during their rise to power. Yet its true location still eludes modern scholars. The recovery of my ancestors of sacred remains would surely strengthen my claim, so I can use my high intrigue and spend money to find the tomb, or establish a valid claim using learning and wealth, or just leave and get the trait depressed and lose a ton of prestige. Well, you know, I think I actually would like to have his remains. I think that would be great fun, so I'm going to spend some intrigue and wealth. Right, I shall spare no expense, which is 2,000 gold, 1,500 gold, or 1,000 gold. We're going to spend a large amount of gold. I want to get the remains of Alexander the Great. Let's go. Oh my good god, I think we've actually done it. We have actually gone and done it. My goodness, ladies and gentlemen, we're converting parts of Europe. Look, these lands have converted to the Germanic faith. And also, we've got Rome. Oh, and I have a new son. He's a genius. Oh, of course you would be if you were born to Statman. Here it is. The tomb of Alexander. The valiant members of my expedition have finally returned to Upland. They bring a marvellous gift with them. A mummified corpse covered in ancient jewels that they claim to belong to my distinguished ancestor. After a consultation with my scholars who carefully examine every detail of the body, I am certain that the expedition has been successful. After having been lost for so many centuries, the body of Alexander the Great has finally been found, and I am the one responsible for its recovery. The only thing that remains is for my claim to Alexander's ancestry to become unobjectable. Send out every messenger and inform every crier. This is going to cost me 10,000 prestige. 
Let it be done. I think it's also quite important that we actually reflect on what an incredible adventure it's been. 100 Statman here is now aged 83. Over the course of that time, he's collected a ridiculous amount of incredible artifacts, which are quite simply astounding. He's also reformed the entire Germanic faith. He's managed to also found five separate bloodlines, and he's killed 353 people. He is quite simply something out of this world, and I can't wait to see where we go, especially now that we've basically basically discovered that he is the son of Alexander the Great. Catholic Revolt has just been declared. There we go, the Catholic Revolt has been finished. The guy who led the Catholic Revolt, he looks like Jesus! It's Jedrizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizzizz